Hello everyone, this is Sean Ross, co-director of the FAMES 3.0 Electronic Field and Notebooks ARDC platform project. And um, I'd like to welcome you to our uh, July 2020 to June 2021 review. Uh, this is our first, essentially our first, uh, our first annual review on uh, the uh, initial year of the project. So, Greetings from Sydney, Australia. Uh, I think we've had a, a very productive year here at uh, FAMES. A few challenges um, uh, ongoing from COVID. We're all still in lockdown uh, here and have been since late, uh, late June, um, but the project goes on. Um, so what I thought, how I thought I'd approach this um, presentation is, um, you've all been provided with the slide deck I'm not going to go through and read everything. You can do that on your own. Uh, but instead, what I'm going to try to do as we go through each slide is to uh, point out some highlights and perhaps provide some additional context. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and uh, begin. And um, again, this, uh, uh, this report covers our first year of activities uh, funded, uh, funded by the Australian Research Data Commons uh, for the FAMES 3.0 Electronic Field Notebooks project, uh, project from July 2020 through June 2021. And if you have any further questions, uh, don't hesitate to contact myself or uh, Penny Crook, the, co the other co-director of the project, at the email addresses that you see here. So um, our first year uh, began with project setup. Uh, project setup was uh, perhaps a little lengthier than uh, we initially expected, uh, but we do have uh, the agreement signed with all of the major uh, cash and in-kind um, uh, contributing partners uh, to the project, and we are chasing up the final um, agreements now with other partners, and hopefully we'll have that wrapped up soon. So um, the administration, I think, is well, uh, the project setup is well under, uh, uh, well in hand. And you can read here, and again, I'll pause uh, for just a minute, um, a, a bit about the project. Regarding the development team, we are extremely uh, happy with the, Austra with the um, research software engineering team at Australian Astronomical Optics. Um, the collaboration with CSIRO Mineral Resources is going well. The division between doing primary development at Macquarie and quality assurance and testing at, uh, uh, across the continent in, uh, in, in Perth, I think has worked, um, has worked well. Um, and uh, as, uh, as the uh, primary development moves on and we start getting a more mature uh, software product, um, we'll be moving into working on integration services, which is something that RNET, uh, the Australian Academic and Research Network, is, uh, is leading. And um, we are developing a memorandum of understanding with them about that now. So again, just a pause so that you can read or pause your own video here. So moving on to a technical overview of, uh, of, of, of where we're at now. Um, we are at the, um, uh, we are at the alpha prototype stage. I'll say a bit more about that in uh, uh, in a minute. Um, but uh, what I'll do uh, first is just maybe give you a bit of background here that um, we've really tried to focus on um, a customer or a client or user driven development rather than technology driven uh, development that um, our development efforts have really been defined by the feedback that we've gotten uh, over the years from uh, users of FAMES 2, 2.6, uh, and by the interviews that we conducted uh, during and after our participation in the CSIRO on Prime program, a, a, a pre a lean startup pre-accelerator program that focused, on, uh, focused us on talking to a lot of users, potential users, people who looked at FAMES and decided not to use it. And out of all of those interviews and the other feedback that we've gotten from clients, we've really uh, aimed to focus on what has come up again and again as um, key uh, uh, shortcomings with earlier versions of FAMES, with FAMES 2.6 that were preventing uptake. Uh, and um, that really uh, revolved around um, 
the uh, need for self-service customization, the ability to operate cross-platform um, with the uh, on on either Android, iOS, or desktop, and uh, easier movement of data back and forth between the application and web or desktop. Um, uh, web or desktop software, um, meaning essentially that you could uh, you could capture software in the field, take it to desktop software or a web a web app or something like that, edit it, and then push that edited um, uh, data back out to, uh, to the field through uh, through the Fames application for further uh, for further editing and use, and continue that cycle as much as uh, as as often as you needed to. Um, at the same time, we're looking to improve scalability and performance, uh, and you know, to accomplish these things, what we're um, what we're doing is defining our development around um, three projects. Uh, research practice the, uh, C, uh, that, that uh, was instantiated into FAMES 2.6 customizations. So we're taking three FAMES 2.6 customizations and ensuring that we can reproduce them and indeed reproducing them in FAMES 3.0. So um, that's, uh, uh, that's the, the context for our technical development. And again, I'll pause so you can read anything on this slide that you would like. So our development progress then, uh, we are in alpha development uh, now, uh, which has focused on core functionality rather than user-facing features. And that alpha development was uh, concluded in uh, June, in mid-June, and passed user acceptance testing then. And the other main uh, point that I'd, uh, I'd highlight on this slide is uh, just to let everybody know how this is, uh, is going. Uh, um, that we are, or, or some decisions that we've made. Uh, all the code is available on GitHub. Um, we've produced a, a, a technical elaboration report um, that can serve a bit as a guide to that, and everything is being licensed under an, uh, under quite a permissive license, an Apache 2.0 license. So the alpha prototype itself um, is it, that um, uh, has. As I noted, uh, it, the alpha prototype itself had focused on um, core um, functionality rather than on uh, on, on user uh, on on user facing features. And the key sentence here is what's italicized on this slide: that this alpha prototype aimed to demonstrate the foundational capabilities of FAMES 3.0. And once we've established that, or which we have, once we establish that, which we have, we will go on in beta development, which is uh, beginning now, uh, to more of the user-facing features. And again, I'll pause to let you read here. So. Uh, development's been our focus, but we've also engaged in uh, in a certain amount of outreach and engagement as well. Um, we've refreshed our branding package. We've got a, a website newsletter, open science framework page, is a Noto community set up to to help to really uh, fully document this uh, project. Um, it's been. Um, frustrating for us to know that other projects uh, around uh, field data collection have existed over the past 20 years, but not to be able to learn anything about them because they didn't really leave any kind of a project record behind. Um, so we're ensuring that uh, that we are uh, documenting uh, what we're doing and, and putting those documents into long-term uh, archives. Um, the only other thing on this slide that I would point out is that um, we are expecting imminently any day now the publication of um, what I would say is the most, um, I don't know, detailed uh, uh, article uh, explaining a FAMES 2.6 uh, customization and deployment, um, and that's being published in the Journal of Field Archaeology, uh, and um, we chose that journal partly because it is a, a, a very high-impact journal in, uh, in archaeology, but also because there is a discourse in the journal now that there have been a number of uh, articles published since about 2015, 2016 uh, about digital field data uh, management, capture, collection, and um, 
uh, and we wanted to enter into that uh, in, in, into that dialogue. Uh, so this uh, this article is going to explore um, a uh, a customization and deployment that I was involved in, um, and other and uh, Della Sabotkova, other fames. Um, uh, team members were involved in at uh, at a landscape archaeology project in Parahora, Greece. So uh, we will be making an announcement um, as soon as, uh, as as soon as this article is published. So um, finally, I think the last major thing that I want to go into today is around commercialization. And um, again, here, rather than read through this, um, what I'm going to do is, uh, is pull out a real, is pull out the highlight of this, that uh, we envision uh, commercialization as a major uh, uh, component of sustainability for this software. Um, we all know about how difficult it is to sustain software through uh, through grants, and we've come to the conclusion after many years that we really must have a, a, a commercial uh, option for our um, for our software. So um, the approach that we've taken um, differentiates between the open source project that you're all a part of now that is centered around the uh, ARDC uh, um, uh, investment uh, that we have uh, uh, that we've received. Um, and uh, this is a this is community driven as any uh, open source project is and we are uh, we're looking to really come up with a uh, or produce at the end um, a, uh, a core code base that um, that fulfills all of the uh, goals outcomes uh, of the ARDC project and our community more broadly. We will then develop based on that downstream from that uh, a commercial open source product that is essentially our uh, vision, um, ours meaning the the fame's uh, leadership team, our our vision of you know what could be done with this uh, core open source. Um, uh, code base. It'll be a particular instantiation of it, um, intended to be a polished uh, commercial product uh, that includes um, uh, that includes, say, project or department or small business product, a sized product, and an enterprise sized um, product. So. Um, this is, uh, a, 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 I think, a, an emerging um, uh, approach to uh, a, a, an emerging business model for commercializing open source software. It's um, based partly on what GitLabs has done, and uh, I can provide some more background to that, which is also in our business plan, which has been um, communicated. And we have set up a, a, a company with um, uh, the help of uh, the CS or support uh, help and support of CSRO uh, the on program that I mentioned earlier uh, and that was kind of we set it up perhaps a bit earlier than we needed to but the window for the um, support from uh, that program was closing as it as that program you know moved into a different phase so we took advantage of it while it was still uh, while it was still available so that's um, basically where we're at. You can read some more of the details here. Um, and uh, again, I can pause for a second for that before I make a few closing remarks. So you could have seen, you'll see I skipped through the output details of the outputs. You're welcome to um, uh, view those in the slide deck that we've, um, uh, that we've provided. And um, you see here are uh, you know our many partners, and we'd like to thank everyone for their support so far. Um, and thank you for your time listening uh, today. Um, we will continue um, making bi-monthly updates, so watch for those. Uh, plus, we'll be making announcements and blog posts uh, via our Substack newsletter, uh, and uh, we look to increase activity on social media as well as we have more and more to report uh, as we uh, develop more of the user user-facing features and the beta um, product uh, becomes more uh, more mature. So we will be involving um, as many of you as would like in uh, in some review of those early uh, er, er, early iterations of those features, and we look forward uh, to to an exciting year ahead where we're going to take this foundation that we've built around the alpha product uh, alpha prototype and get it from there to um, 
uh, to a much more uh, a, a much more mature product by the end of the year. So thanks again, and uh, we look forward to continuing working with you. And again, greetings from Sydney, and good luck to everyone. Bye bye.